This is a full review of the all-new BMW 3 Series G20. Today with a new engine we didn't have so far. And here on Autogefühl we will take you on the full tour. Exterior, interior and the driving experience. Today on the Focus in the driving part, which engine should you go for? Because we've driven two different petrol engines. We've driven the plug-in hybrid version and we've driven the big diesel. Now we have a small diesel. So overall we can at the end say then which one should you go for or which one might be more important for you? All the details now in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Here in the front, we can see here that G20, that's the internal code for this new generation, has a wider double kidney in the front, also has those adaptive air intakes in the kidney, so it just opens on demand for better wind efficiency. And this one is the M Sport model, so it has some stronger bumpers and also more dark accentuations there. And it fits very well to this mineral white color we have here today. The headlamps also more horizontally drawn than has this design kink right there. It comes either standard LED, then it's more like a straight LED signature line. This one here, the second step, it's called in the German price list LED mit erweiterten Umfängen, which would be like LEDs with extended extents. Yeah, that's a little bit engineering speech. <laughs> but what they mean is that when you have like the second LED step, they are also adaptive. And then the third step would be the LED laser light, and with more high beam power up to three, uh, 650 meters if that's allowed in your market. Doesn't make sense in the US yet. But that way, you know, we can see this one here then is the more elaborated LED. So what do you think about the new front? It's not a new invention, but new for the 3 Series here. Integrated novels here in the wipers and they help you to clean the windscreen a little bit better and also waste less water. 4 meters 70, 15 foot 4 or 185 inches, that's 8.5 centimeters longer than the predecessor version. Also the weight is a little bit lower, 55 kilograms and the weight balance has been optimized so you have the 50-50 weight balance front axle rear axle. Also 25% stiffer the whole chassis than in the predecessor generation and especially this design on here in the lower end, you can see that very well from your perspective. This gives so much more, you know, dynamic character to the car. Other than that, the base design is of course somewhat conservative, but that's maybe also what you expect from a 3 Series. Here with the Hofmeister King design here in this rear window frame, very interesting. And since this one's the M Sport model, it wears the M badge. Someone might say, like, oh, Sacrilege, M Sport badge or an M badge on a 320D. Yeah, you know, it's available for all versions. So and then those ones are the top 19 inch rims. Talking about those one later, also with those extended brakes, so bigger brakes and also with the contrasting calipers. But they already start from 16 inch if you want a little bit more comfort. But of course, the question always between look and comfort, definitely. Here, good contrast here in the um, black frames to the white. If you like this, you know, a little bit more evil look but of course also chrome would be available here at the window frames depending on the line you pick of course so what's your take on that here the new design of this generation for this generation here they also went with a lower center of gravity and an underfloor cover even to improve the wind efficiency that's also very interesting by the way the car is also a little bit wider four centimeters wider track in the front two centimeters wider track in the rear and Visually, it's even wider here in the rear. Look at that here with those horizontal drawn tail lamps and they're pretty impressive. And I think that definitely looks better than in the outgoing model. Those ones are real exhaust tips, by the way, here. So that's very well done. And again, a nice contrast from the white and the black then here in the M Sport line. So overall, I think design-wise, yes, yeah, somewhat conservative, yes. But I think overall, still they've done a good job. What's your take? One minor detail I always love about BMWs, here, you just pull it twice here to open the hood 
And that's it. So you don't have, you know, search anything under the hood to open it finally. And thus we can open it just like this. Very convenient. Today a 2 liter 4 cylinder diesel is either available with 150 horsepower in the 318D or with 190 horsepower here today in the 320D. X drive is optionally possible. And then a 3 liter 6 cylinder diesel with 265 horsepower, always X drive, all wheel drive. That one we had in the Touring review, you can also check that out. And the two small deals available with six-speed manual gearbox, or optional than the eight-speed auto. And all other engines always come with the eight-speed automatic gearbox, like the petrols, two-liter four-cylinder, 184 horsepower in the 320i, or 258 horsepower in the 330i. And of course, so far the most powerful one, the M340i, the three-liter six-cylinder petrol, 374 horsepower, or with, with X drive. So, and then there's the PHEV, the 330E, based on a 2 liter force on the petrol engine, together then also with an electric drive. We also have a full review of that. You can check that out. So let's take a look at the interior together. Soft touch at the inside of the doors. Nice Hofmeister King design quote here at the door handles from the inside. And those swinging lights where also the LED ambient light is very well integrated. In our initial 330i review, we can see also nighttime ambient shots. I recommend you that for later. And also bigger bolts do fit in here. Then this one, the M Sport model here with the entry batch, also with aluminum pedals right there. There's an option to get a center tech leather at dashboard. There's a cool option, definitely. It gives some soft and premium touch and also without hurting animals. But here, those seats, they are animal skin origin. It's not really necessary in Europe or Germany, especially. You can get fabric seats as a base. They will have a softer um, bolt string then as well. Or there's a fabric inside, leather red center tech outside mix available. Or as a sport seat, Alcantara on the inside and center tech leather on the outside. Those are really superb. In the US, you get the sensor tech as base, either in black or in beige. The good that they offer some color choices. And again, look at the prices for the you know, extra animal skin equipment. They are not really worth the price also for the extras. So you try to keep the price down because, tell you more about later, the price is very high when you have all those extras. Yeah, the steering wheel left side for the cruise control. Very elaborate assistance systems. I'll take a look in detail when we drive the car. And on the right side here, you can control the volume and upper part and also control something of the instruments or for the voice input, you activate it with Hey BMW or then again with this voice button in the top infotainment scrim mode. Top infotainment trim mode, sorry, scrim, that's more about gaming. <laughs> so in top infotainment trim mode, you also have a great voice input. We can also test some of that now in the interior part. Oh, look at that, double installation glass on this very vehicle. Also one of the reasons why it will remain silent on the interior. Getting inside, typical mid-size sedan, and you have enough space, definitely. They have also made the apron a little bit slimmer, so you have a better view to the front right there. Those seats here today, again, not super comfortable, so I have experienced it better already in the 3 Series. And again, like this optional animal skin service is um, really, really tight, so it makes the whole seating experience pretty stiff. Don't like that that much. So the steering wheel can be adjusted pretty easily nice process and also you know very wide actually also heated steering wheel is available and with 1 minute 86 or 6 with 1 if I put it all the way down there's enough headroom left there is also an optional panoramic roof available which is now 10 centimeters wider uh, I think we had that in the studio review for 3 series at least and in some of the other reviews as well in the touring maybe too so in the other reviews you also see that and then you can also put the seat up I would always recommend to put a little bit up if you can, um, so it, you know, it's a little bit more upright as for the angle. So it's not about higher or lower, it's more about that here it's land backwards. If you put it up, it's a little bit more upright in the angle, that's better for driving overall. So all so tall people can find a good seating position here, definitely. 
But again, um, there are different seating forms available and different seating surfaces, and you have to find the right one for you. There's, by the way, also a small cubby hole in the front end. This is, of course, a new BMW quality here. Um, wow, even dampened here in the front, this small cubby hole. Ah, smooth. Love that. And now enjoy the interior with me, where the base setup would be 5.7 inch screen left with analog dials, and on the right side then an 8.8 .8 inch screen. And this one is the top setup. Here on the left, 12.3 inch all digital instruments, and the right side 10.25 inch screen then with the voice integration also and wireless apple carplay is available right here so i have my phone in the box here below for the inductive charging and of course this combination wireless carplay and inductive charging in lower part does make sense somewhat android auto there's still no contract between google and bmw yeah waiting for that and again this center tech leather red dashboard pretty cool very nicely done contrast stitches this is the head-up display unit soon more about these to that and also to those screens we'll keep you updated with those the climate unit is still you know somewhat manual because you can control it right here while driving i still like to have this possibility and there's a volume knob still available and those hotkeys so they somewhat do a mix between the all digital stuff and still knobs you can actually press and the styling is quite nice flawless and also the Build quality has been massively upgraded if you compare it to the predecessor generation. You can lower part, as I told you earlier, with inductive charging box, then they have some adaptive cup holders, and an old USB port, so they have a mix with that one here, 12 volt power supply, automatic shifting lever here. Again, this one would also be available with manual. And not only this one here via touch, but you can also use this knob here in the lower part still to control it better while driving. You know, I like those redundant solutions. Driving modes, talking about more about when we drive the car. And then there's this armrest, very well attached. And underneath, there's one USB-C port then. Also turning on the engine, and you can see the functionality here of the... Oh, there's also a white BMW 3 Series now in this view. So good that they also adapt the color. By the way, this one here is watching you, that you're still alive. So for the assistance systems, so it's actually really monitoring you that you're still awake and then, you know, it's suggesting a break or something. Pretty scary, isn't it? Then the RPMs you see here counterclockwise. I was first thinking, how could you do that? But yeah, I got used to it meanwhile. And you can see in the middle then, there's then space left for the GPS, for example. So it also has a pro side. And the head-up display, it appears smaller on camera as it usually is. And it's very crystal clear and crisp to see. I love those BMW head-up displays and if you have a GPS route running, then you also have some commands in there as for that. Then the infotainment screen up close. The map is right here, you can access it right here. It's a very good processor unit, see here, very responsive also. And I really like the BMW infotainment system best. So they are the ones when I were on the events, never misled me, always very clear to read and so on, um, unlike some of the other systems. You can also have some driving information right here, like the journey data when you see the fuel consumption. So, but you can always use the lower screen and then control it like this. So again, good to have those redundant functions. And of course, this voice input. Hey, BMW. Hello, what can I help you with? Set temperature to 22 degrees. Turning on the engine for that, that definitely does okay. that. I set the temperature on 22 degrees Celsius. So, um, because some of the commands are only then working when the engine is running. And of course, it sometimes depends on the internet connection, how well it's working, but you can set temperature or, for example, have an address input. And I've used it so many times now, also when I was, it's with the road trip or the BMW X5 in US, all addresses I have entered with the voice input. That's really amazing. Again, the best system together with Mercedes on the market. Well, and other than that, what else is available? Yes, the Apple CarPlay and has the hotkey in the top part here to access it. So that's also nicely integrated. Also uses almost all of the space right there. But then again, I want to mention it once more because it's always such a hassle to activate it. So if you want to do it for the very first time, then you first have to go to mobile devices and then here um, in settings, activate Apple CarPlay. If that's not activated, then it doesn't work. Sometimes it's, you know, deactivate by standard and yeah, 
So that's about it. So then go to your phone and then connection mode sometimes is set on BMW iDrive. And this you also have to set on Apple CarPlay. So the two things to do and for so many times, I uh, maybe not remember it again, search again and say, oh wait, I activated it, it says Apple Car, by the way, it's still work. Yeah, both options for that have to be activated. A little bit complicated, I think. But then you have it wirelessly connected and you're all good to go. Oh, and what's very nice with the decent resolution as well as the rear camera, those helping lines also, that end, look at that. The camera even tilts a little bit. That's quite cool, isn't it? And next to that, this drone view from above. Yeah, and I can't stop a review here with praising those BMW wings visual effect. Yes, they're gone from the lights, but on the interior, you still find this design cue. Hmm, really miss it on the exterior. It's very interesting how they cut out the door here with the glass in the rear. And here in the 3 Series, they also put the rubber protection over it. I didn't see that in the 1 Series, but maybe it will be upgraded later. But here it's definitely okay. But yeah, very interesting detail. And good quality also with soft touch here at the inside of the doors at the rear. And if you step into the rear here, the thing is that you have a little bit more leg room now on this new generation. So before I had a hard time sitting here in the rear, now it's actually possible, it even leaves me some space. But again, it has not the best package. There are other cars which are maybe even shorter and have more leg room. So this building style with the long hood, even possible big engines, Rear wheel drive and so or all wheel drive, yeah, it limits the thing overall a little bit, yes, but you know, still okay to sit here. Um, the headroom is also okay, no problem as for that. My hairs might be touching the ceiling, but not my head exactly. I can definitely sit here very well, that's no problem, but again, there are better cars as for the rear comfort. Pretty um, thick, this whole area here definitely, did, you know loses a little bit space now on the interior. The middle tunnel here, as I said, is really large. I fix at the outside of the seats. You cannot flip the seats from here. You can flip down the ski hatch, that's possible. And also here as for cup holders, they're also adaptive with some rubber. Um, well, <laughs> as for that. Then, yeah, again, sitting in the middle part, it is pretty stiff as for the seating surface. It works space-wise, yes, but not too comfortable. And again, this huge middle tunnel right there. Two USB-C devices next to a 12 volt power supply. And you can also get a rear climate unit. Even rear seat heating would be an option. So when we open the trunk, of course, the Touring is now also available and gives you a little bit more flexibility. This one here, about one meters in width and about one meters in length. And the height here is about 50 centimeters. And when I put a suitcase in here, it looks like this and it still works in a vertical way. So that's fine. You, so you'll be fine just with this trunk, definitely. Again, if you want more flexibility, get the Touring. And here you can unlock those seats, but then you have to go around or then, you know, use some of the luggage pieces not possible with that one here <laughs> but you have used um, maybe we use some stiff luggage pieces then you can also put them around and that go around here hey guys so and then it goes like this there is a you know like a wave step right here it's very well integrated but it's definitely present and the length right here to the seat as I would be driving that would be one meters and 80. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the BMW 3 Series in this new generation. Today then with the focus on the 320D and the general question, petrol, plug-in hybrid, diesel, which one should you go for actually? Yeah, we'll find out. We'll start here on a short bit of a motorway, about 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour and they work on the noise insulation here on the new generation, so it's more silent than before. Gives you a very good feeling and of course a very stable handling. This one here equipped with the adaptive M suspension. You might remember that's a standard suspension with the um, you know with those um, hydraulic cushions already. And there's an M suspension, like a very fixed one, very stiff one. And then there's an adaptive suspension which we have right here which had somewhat uh, a sporty setup, but still it's adaptive. So, you know, 
it's then adapting to the situation. <laughs> so, and uh, we really recommend sticking with the base suspension to save money, or then upgrade it here to the adaptive suspension mm, because the true M suspension, which we've been testing earlier in the 330i, is really rough, really stiff. So, only if you especially appreciate that. Um, other than that, rather leave it. This blind spot monitor, by the way, this yellow triangle you see here in the side mirror. Pretty helpful feature, definitely. And yeah, well, the steering is um, you know, pretty reactive. So you can induce a slalom, like, you know, arcade-alike. Feels almost like a computer vehicle. And the only thing is um, the BMW 3 Series stands for the brand itself, you know? This is like core BMW. And I would expect from this car to have the most natural steering feeling in the whole brand lineup. And the thing is, it has the least natural steering feeling in the whole model lineup. All the SUVs we've been driving recently, they have, you know, a more direct steering, so to say, that gives you a more natural feeling. So this one here, yes, it's direct and it's really responsive, but it gives you this, you know, very artificial feeling. You have, of course, the driving modes, like the sport mode, for example. See also the color shift in here, nice visualization. Um, it does change a little bit of that. So here, for example, in comfort mode, and people behind me will probably think I'm drunk now. And then in the sports mode, um, <clears throat> it gets a little bit... Oh, there's the police. Maybe I should stop that for a moment. Doing nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah, in the sports mode, it gets you have a little bit more resistance that can maybe increase that driving feeling. Um, however, the, the thing you know remains the same, and it was also one of my biggest criticism points in my initial three series review. You know, yeah, that's about it. So, um, also like this, you know, very low angle degrees. This is where it feels especially a little bit loose. And then it gets better the more you steer, actually. So, yes, it is fun. You can very well control the car. It's super agile, also suspension-wise. But again, come on, BMW. This is your, you know, like, signature product here. Make it more natural, as for the steering feeling. It worked very well, like in the 1 Series now, the new one. Even the X2, the X1 or so. Um, great steering characteristic. So, why not doing it here? I have no idea. So, we drive the diesel here today, and of course, you know, I've been doing some tests earlier, also consumption rides and so on, um, because it's better to do it on long term run. Is there any ambulance coming, or is it, is it from the rear? So, now live on auto fuel, I'll cross the red light. So, I'm not even sure if that's um, if that's allowed to do. I mean, it's the right thing to do. Yes, of course. Um, but I'm not even sure if, if that's officially allowed or if I could be, you know, caught by the police doing that. Of course, the police uh, would look, um, you know, pretty bogus if they bust me for that uh, because I'm helping, uh, you know, saving lives. Um, but I think I'm not even sure if it's officially allowed to do that. I don't know. But if anyone but wants to bust me for that. Please go ahead. We'll have a nice viral video then here on Auto Um Yeah, you know, it's always very important to pay attention to that. And of course, be very careful when crossing the red light because other cars might come. So very slowly, check everything right and left and so on. But so super important that everyone makes a freeway, especially, in, of course, also in the motorway when there's traffic. Um, yeah, very, very important thing. One of the most important things you can do in traffic, paying attention to that. It might be you seeking help at one point. Always think about that. So back to the car, you know, and about the consumption figures. Uh, yeah, so we had the 330i, for example, and had something like, you know, seven to eight liters on more kilometers. That is about like in the 30s MPG regions US, in the 40s MPG regions UK. And with the 330e, of course, it's always hard to say. It really depends on how often do we recharge and then how can you combine the electric consumption and the fuel consumption so it's hard to give a realistic fuel figure for that because it varies so much 
but what we found out that when we drive the 330E, when it's depleted from the battery, it will still score in you know comparable fuel figure as we had with the 330i with the pure petrol engine, so about like seven and a half liters normal kilometers. So again, about 30 mpg US. Although it is way heavier, you know, because of the battery. But you know, you can always use the recuperation still. Then we had the 330D, the big diesel, the three liter six cylinder diesel in the touring and was a little bit disappointed as for the fuel uh, consumption for that because it was basically the same as for the two liter four cylinder petrol engine. So then the question is, yeah, why go for the diesel? Yeah, it has a lot of punch then. Yeah, of course, but um, yeah, all wheel drive as well might be um, important for, you know, harsh weather conditions. But of course, this three series here, when it has rear wheel drive only, like we have today, yes, then it drives really better out of the corners felt that with 330e as well. So here then, the smaller 2-liter two 4-cylinder two diesel, yes, you can keep it lower as for the fuel consumption. You can score something as, you know, 6 liters, more kilometers, oh, at, my, at the moment I have like 5.5, yeah, 5.6. Um, so you can score that, so you save, if you think about, you know, the petrol engines about 1 to 2 liters, more kilometers, that is rather than the 40s plus MPG regions, so that's definitely decent. Mm, but if you think about then that the difference from diesel to petrol is not that huge, then the question remains, does it still make sense? Hmm. The diesel is also more expensive as for the base price. So I think it only pays off if you drive like long, 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 yeah, many, many kilometers or many, many miles per year. Other than that, the petrol engine is, of course, a little bit more fun to drive. And, as I said earlier, in the 330E review, I found that the plug-in hybrid was the most fun to drive here with the 3 Series. It was really cool. Those electric moments, this calmness, um, and then a little bit of the electric punch again, was my favorite 3 Series so far. But here, I mean, it's a decent engine, so it's relatively silent and calm here at lower RPMs. Of course, it doesn't sound super, super great when you accelerate it out. We'll soon do that, by the way. Then we also have, by the way, the Eco Pro. Everything goes to the blue scheme then. Um, that helps you with the fuel economy. You roll a little bit better. Keeps it in the higher gears to keep the RPMs a little bit lower. So we can do that. Of course, when we want to accelerate out a little bit more, then we put it to sports mode. So overall, it gives you a good and drive agile feeling. Soft touch here, by the way, also. Then yeah, I got those, you know, another red sensor tech dashboard, as I mentioned earlier. So it makes a good quality impression. They really work on the quality here in the new generation. And of course, you somewhat feel it also while driving. Not exactly super happy about the long term comfort of those seats here today, as I said earlier. Also realized it while driving. Mm, yeah, one roll does, you know, the, the um, you know, the animal skin, this Vanesco, how they call it the surface is very stiff. So, especially if you can get that in Europe or in Germany, stick with the fabric seats, not only for the animal's sake, but also for your comfort's sake. The fabric seats are softer, they adapt a little bit more to the body, so much more comfortable in them. Or then again, this there's this fabric uh, SensorTech mix or the Alcantara SensorTech mix in the sports seat. That is also available depending on you know which seat you like better or which is more suitable for your body, for example. Um, yeah, in the US you can get the SensorTech base, then just leave it as it is, definitely. So, now sports mode and 70 kilometers to 100. Let's go! Oh, that, was already, that was already 110. So, decent acceleration. So, power-wise, this 2-liter force in the diesel in this case here with 190 horsepower and a 320D is absolutely sufficient for this car. No doubt about that. It also keeps the weight down, you know, you don't need the big diesel necessarily. And again, it is the one with the best fuel economy. Of course, leaving the 330E as a PHEV aside. Now, cruise control. There's also an adaptive one here. I can very well see it in the head-up display. So those details, they have the best head-up display, definitely. This is so crystal clear and sometimes, especially in those Mercedes, it was a little bit 
blurry or something. But here in this case, super crisp, super clear, the head-up display, I love that. For example, when I change the lane, you know, the distance is being kept right there. What about those, you know, assist then here? Everything is green. So don't take your hands off the steering wheel, don't do it. But you can see here, if I'm doing just for show purposes here, then again, blind spot monitor is being activated here. The car is kept in the lane for a while at least. After a while, um, car starts complaining. And of course, you can stick it all the way through when you keep your hands on the steering wheel. So those new assistance systems that put in here, they work flawlessly and they are very well integrated. So you can just praise that. And sometimes they are a little bit too nervous or so and you feel like deactivating them all the time, especially in the Volkswagen AG mode, like VW, um, Audi and so on, the newest models of those. You always feel like, seriously, come on, let's deactivate it. And you know, at every startup, they are activated again, you know, so it's deactivated again. Sometimes they have good hotkeys where you can deactivate it. But here, this actually a car where I don't feel like I have to deactivate it right now, otherwise I'm not happy anymore. So um, that's definitely well done. And again, good noise station. It's keeping so silent in that vehicle. And then, you know, as this region here again is like wobbly. It's like, why? <laughs> Sorry. Can't stop complaining about that in this case. And then now in this roundabout right here, see here, pretty good contact to the road. And to cancel it right there on the brakes, but gives a good driving feeling. This adaptive suspension is really very sporty, especially in the sports mode, a little bit stiffer, but still it's not too uncomfortable. Of course, when you're going over some bumps, you feel that it's a little bit stiffer then, definitely. And when you're in a comfort mode, it stays a little bit more comfortable. And the steering is also lighter, so you can change that around a little bit. But again, considering the high price of the car, hmm, I would try to get rid of some of the extras, you know, because the price here you can, you have in a 320D, 2 liter 4 cylinder diesel, this is here 67,000 euros for this very car. What? Seriously? It's not that the competition, like when you get a, like a Mercedes C-Class or something, or Audi A4 would be much better as for that. Maybe sometimes even worse. Here, by the way, good feeling also on the brakes. But that's ridiculous, isn't it? And one very interesting thing is, and this is always the cool thing, when you've just driven another car, which somewhat fits in the segment or in the price region, and you guys know that I've just been driving the Toyota Camry which is segment-wise something in between 3 Series and 5 Series when you look at the length. But that Camry in the highest spec available, like maxed out in Germany, was 40,000 euros. And in the US the price is even better. You can like get a decent one for 30k or something. So you, we almost talk about that the Camry is half the price. And as you say, it's the much more comfortable car. It has the better relaxed seats. Has a relaxed suspension. Yes, of course, this one is the way sportier car, no doubt about that. But just you know, to put things in perspective, um, that with a Camry you get pay half the price, get way more legroom, get more comfort. Sorry, BMW, I have to mention also that. <laughs> yeah, but of course, this one here is like really decently fun. This car here has great agility that really worked on the, um, on the interior tiers, as I said earlier. So it's overall definitely still a very good choice in this in this mid-size segment and people will still love that vehicle and I also really like driving it but again the comfort will be increased if you have the fabric seats you're lucky if you can get those in your market definitely and I think you don't have to go for every extra and every spec because that's also where they make the money so you know really pay attention to to the extras you pick then and because when you when the price is so high for the car, yeah, I think it doesn't doesn't really pay off that much. I think. So what I want to do is I want to pull off here because I want to just do one more acceleration, like you know, in sports mode, from you know a little bit standstill, like out, out of the corner, like an acceleration out of the corner. See how the car behaves. In the sports mode, it's more dynamic setting, of course, and we can do it right here now. And 
that is what I mean. You know, you, you feel directly. I mean, it's good punch, even though you have the diesel. It doesn't sound too bad either. And this is a cool thing when you have the rear wheel drive, you know. It pushed the car a little bit around the corner. So yeah, for most small vehicles and, and so on, it won't make such big difference if it's front wheel driven. Yeah, the Toyota Camry is also front wheel driven, by the way. So that's also one of the, you know, sports differences. So yes, it is more fun with rear wheel drive. And the thing where you realize that the most is not even when you compare two different cars, which is like different concept, but more what I felt with driving the three series, the very same car with all wheel drive and with rear wheel drive at the very same day. And there I really felt it was really more fun to drive it rear wheel drive only than with the all wheel drive. Maybe the all-wheel drive is better for you if you maybe live in alpine landscape or something and have strong winter with a lot of snow and so on. But if you don't, then I would always buy this one here with rear-wheel drive only and have a little bit more fun. And again, the sl slalom capabilities of this car, uh, as soon as you move this one around, especially with the adaptive suspension and this arcade-like steering, yes, again, not natural, but it's definitely still fun the car feels so much smaller, you know? So they have pushed up the agility. Remember also from the figures, 25% more, um, you know, stiffness or more rigidity as from the chassis alone, then also lower weight if you compare it to the precess, although it's packed with more tech. Wow. So the cornering ability of this car is really impressive. And this is just again the 320D, okay. Adaptive suspension, that makes a big difference. And those 90 inch wheels, of course, make the ride rather stiff and sporty. So if you seek more comfort, A, as I said, get the adaptive suspension or just stick with the base suspension. This will also do fine and save you money. And then the thing you can save money as well with and keep it simpler, get smaller wheels. So 16 to 19 inch available. 16 might, you know, not be the best compromise as for the visual. But 17 already works visually, I think at least. And 18 would still be a good, probably the best compromise between visual, not between money, but between visual and comfort. So 18 if you want great visual already, great look. But still don't want to lose the comfort with the biggest wheels because those, yeah, especially when the road gets a little bit rougher now, I do feel that we have 19 inch wheels and it looks a little bit more menacing, yes, but not really necessary as for the comfort loss, definitely not. So my tip would be 17 or 18 inch for this car and wow, I mean, driven this car so often now, but that's exactly where you profit from here also from our in-depth reviews and auto fuel. Fuel consumption now, by the way, a little bit less than six liters in one kilometers. So my verdict is it's a great fun car. They have a lot of improvements if you compare it to the predecessor, especially more silent, more refined ride. You feel that. Then fuel economy is, yeah, it's, you know, it's somewhat okay, but are the diesels worth it? If you pay extra price for it and more tax, probably something. Yeah, not so sure about that. So I think the petrol will also do fine. And my tip is really get the 330E, especially if you get some governmental benefits. These, this PF ride was fantastic. So it was my favorite one for the three series so far. And in some markets, this one will be way cheaper than any other model. So I, I recently got a lot of inquiries. People ask me again about the 330E, um, and also you know, comparing this to very different cars, even to a Tesla Model 3, by the way, which would then again, if you think about Tesla Model 3 versus the three series, I wouldn't have imagined that, but the Tesla Model 3 is way cheaper than this one here. So that might also be, you know, a reason. So my biggest criticism point is, first of all, the comfort could be better here, especially with those seats. But again, will be better with fabric seats. Then the steering is cool and fun, yes, but it should feel more natural. But that's my take. What I expect from a BMW 3 Series is the core brand product and the price pricing is ridiculous with this car. So you have to get a very good dealer price, like, you know, some very good offering, 
or then really pay attention to which details do you need. You need the blind spot monitor, that's very important. The adaptive screw control is also pretty cool. Fotainment system wise, yeah, this one is pretty fancy and the voice input is cool. Hey BMW. Ah, it's, it's I still on German. Hey BMW. Hallo, womit kann ich behilflich sein? Wie ist das Wetter? So how's the weather? I can see it myself, you know. Let's say, please wait. Yeah, I think here's like an area where the internet connection gets a little bit worse. Ah. Aktuell ist es in Felbert bewölkt mit einer Temperatur von 22 Grad. Oh, it's 22 degrees outside. She says, but it shows 21 degrees. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, why not? So. This voice assistant is really cool, but I mean, the base infotainment system will also do it at some point. And do I need those digital instruments? They are also pretty fancy, but I can also live with the analog ones. Always depends, you know, which extras do you really want to pay for. So, yeah, I hope I, I could help you configure your car a little bit more. Definitely very interesting impressions here. No matter which engine you pick, the base characteristics of the car will, of course, not change. And Closing up with the you know, biggest focus or biggest fun factor with this car. Yes, it's still a mid size sedan which is available with rear wheel drive. And that's not that often on the market anymore. You know, the Sadie C class. And then, yeah, the Cadillac models. And then, mm, it gets rather thin as for the offer. So, this is definitely the biggest fan, fun factor. Yeah, fan factor probably as well. Yeah. <laughs> And you can have this rear wheel driven fun, this rather purest experience, even here with the 320D. So if you buy the small diesel, or maybe your company says, sorry, our policy is only get the 320 or even the 318D. Sorry about that. You don't have to be sad. You'll, you'll have just as much fun as with any other BMW 3 Series, because the power is sufficient. You have this super agile handling, and if you have the rear wheel drive only, you also have this great accelerating out of the corners, so you'll be, you'll be just fine, I can tell you. And remember, if you're one of the manual gearboxes fan, this one here is the one where you still have the possibility. Of course, here I have the shifting panels with the optional automatic gearbox, can use those. Yay! <laughs> but this one here is also available with a true manual gearbox, only this, the 320D, and the smaller one, same engine, a little bit lower horsepower spec, the 318D. Those two are available with manual gearbox. Everything else, you're always with the automatic. It's more relaxing, more comfort. I would always recommend the automatic gearbox, but at least manual gearbox fans still have some possibilities then. And now to our conclusion for today with the BMW 3 Series in this new generation and the big engine question as well. Exterior wise, fresh, a little bit wider, but still somewhat a classic design. And I really like the new rear, it looks a little bit sleeker than before. Interior, we now have a little bit more legroom in the rear, but yeah, the package overall is not the best still. Comfort wise, those seats here today were not my absolute favorite, had them better so far with different seat setup. And again, if you have the possibility, stick with the fabric seats because they have a softer surface that will give you more comfort. Also, extras wise, yeah, I have to pay attention that the price doesn't go all the way up because the pricing is it's really super expensive vehicle. As I said, you can even get this car almost to 70,000, even with the small deals. I mean, come on. Other than that, the interior build quality has been stepped up massively here in this new generation. I really like that. And the infotainment system is also quite nice now. While it's Apple CarPlay um, application, yeah, Android Auto is still missing. And the voice input together with the Mercedes MBUX is among the best in the market right now. Driving wise, such an agile driving feel, really cool. Don't go for the biggest wheels if you want a little bit more comfort. Other than that, you have also done the three different suspension choices talked about earlier. Stick with the base or with the adaptive suspension. Had the adaptive one here today. So they really have a great agile driving feeling. And you know, when you put this car into a slalom, it immediately feels like a small go-kart. And that's you know one of the biggest achievements here with this car. 
yeah, the steering should be a little more natural in the feeling. That was also one of the criticism points. Overall, still a very good mid-size segment car, definitely. Even though it's, of course, not the best price offering, but we also know that from Audi and Mercedes. So, what's your take on that? And, of course, engine choice. I think the 330e, the plug-in hybrid version, is at the moment the one to go for. I had the most fun with that. The two diesels, hmm, yeah, I think the 330d is too expensive together with the all-wheel drive and the big deals. Just too expensive, it doesn't give you so much um, advantage. You can go with the small deals, maybe even with the you know, manual gearbox if you favor that to keep the price low. Other than that, I think a 330i is a good pure engine choice because the fuel consumption is not so much more lower with the diesels here than would be with the petrol engine if you keep it rather calm and steady. Of course, if you really hammer those vehicles, then the difference between diesel and petrol will be a little bit wider. The diesel have the characteristic that their span of fuel consumption is not that wide as it would be with the petrol engines. So, I hope you really enjoyed this insight here because the review here today somewhat also consisted of all the other reviews we have done on this three series generation so far. So I really hope you enjoyed that. Please give us some feedback. We really appreciate your support. Please subscribe if you haven't done so far and tune in next time or take a detailed look of on one of the other three series reviews. We will also link them in the video description and in the pinned comment. Thank you again for watching. Thank you again for tuning into Auto Fuel. See you next time. Also follow us on our two Instagram channels, the Auto Fuel and mine also as well. They're also linked in the video description. And now <laughs> we have finished for the day. Thank you and bye.